All right. Next, the one and only Nathan Wanamaker. He's going to talk about some new program features, some enhancements, and also talk about bank products a little bit. So our director of product, Mr. Nathan Wanamaker, let's give him a round of applause. Thank you very much. So we'll talk about uh, a little bit about the season from the past season, season review. Uh, we'll talk a little about security. You've heard about it already today. We'll go over it again a little bit. Um, some new and improved features and some new uh, partnerships and opportunities that we've worked hard on on uh, this off season for you and your clients. So, Electronic filing numbers finished just slightly ahead this past year. If you've been coming for a while, you hear me every year say that it keeps growing and growing and growing very strongly. Of course, this year we had the PATH Act, which kind of affected all that, right? Uh, most people, in general, thought that that was the reason for delay in a lot of filing. Started off very much behind and progressively got closer and closer till right at the end of the season it finished basically flat with last year. Tax layer processed over 11 million returns, totaling over $25 billion worth of taxpayer refunds. So that was a very sizable jump for us. Thank you very much, because that's because of all of you. The IRS officially opened their 2017 filing season on January 23rd. Everyone remember that's a little bit later than normal. Usually it's the uh, day following Martin Luther King holiday. Uh, they delayed an extra week this past year. And again, that was partially because of the PATH Act changes. But they did start the uh, annual hub and controlled launch testing on January 11th, which was pretty much in line with normal timing. And of course, they haven't announced an official start date for the 2018 filing season yet. Uh, about an hour ago, the House did actually pass the tax law in the House. Um, Senate has not decided what they're doing yet. Uh, hopefully, we'll know <laughs> within about a week of what they're doing. The good news so far is both of the, the laws are written to where they affect 2018 and forward. So hopefully that won't delay us and have to make uh, some last minute changes. Obviously, that's gonna make it very hard to predict. We te uh, tend to try and ship our software to you in the first week of December. That's still obviously gonna be our goal. But again, with everything that's going on, that could slip a week possibly. We expect hub testing to begin the week uh, before the official start date, whenever they do announce it. And of course, remember that during hub testing, when we participate with that, we send tax returns in, they're processed like real live returns, and you'll get acknowledgments back from them. More and more states are participating every year in this too, so you'll also start to see your state acknowledgments come back. But remember, of course, that does not affect your funding, okay? So don't expect your funding to come earlier just because you're getting your acknowledgement earlier. So what about security? Well, over the past few years, we've talked a lot about the initiative to stem stolen identity uh, refund fraud. We talked last year about the new EFIN validation code, right? So when you had your software last year, you had to actually enter an EFIN validation code to tie your software to your EFIN. It was available inside your My Account. So once you logged in, on the left-hand side, you could go to your account history. And then on your actual order, you had an EFIN validation code. That'll work the same way this year. You'll still need to put in an EFIN validation code to activate your software. It is not the same code as last year, so make sure you log into your My Account to see it. And it's going to work just like last year. So once you're doing your initial setup, you can click here to link into your My Account if you don't have it already open, and grab that code and paste it into your software. So what's that gonna do? That takes every return you file and appends that code to the EFIN. So the IRS knows that unless they have complete control over your accounts, that that return really is coming from you. We also uh, added an admin account to the, mandatory admin account to the software last year and every preparer had to have a unique login, right? That's gonna continue again this year. Um, interesting fact, the proposed changes for the security standards are now going to minimum of 15 characters in your password. That is not changing in your desktop software this year. We're sticking with eight characters at this point, but it's coming, so just be aware of it. Um, if you do forget your password for your admin account, and it has happened, when you log into your My Account, there's a program override that you can link to. 
That's going to give you a code to give you temporary access. Uh, you put that code in as the username with no password, hit enter, and it'll let you get in and change your password. How many of you are already logged in and updated your My Account so far this year on our website? It's a little bit over half, maybe. So you've seen this already. For the other half of you, you haven't seen this yet. When you log in, you're going to see a new process. The first time it's going to ask you uh, to go through and create a new password. And if your uh, login was not at least six characters, it's going to make you also change your login. So you're going to see a screen pop up like this. And again, your username will be right here. If it's not at least six characters, it's going to make you change it. Then you're going to have to enter your cell phone twice and your email address twice and create that new password. And it tells you all the requirements down here and then confirm your password. This is going to be used for a couple of reasons. One, it's going to be used if you have to recover your account for any reason. If you say, I forgot my password, I forgot my login. It's also used to authenticate you. How many people know what MFA means or you've heard the term MFA? Okay, Get used to that term. It's multi-factor authentication. What it means is you're trying to get at something that contains secure data and we have to know who you are to make sure that we can let you in. So by putting these pieces of information in, if you log in to your My Account from a new computer, for example, we assume it's not you, because it's not the customer that we're used to seeing. So it's gonna say, okay, we need to send a text to your phone or a code to your email for you to verify who you are. There's also a time frame on that, which again, Depending on who you ask, it changes as to how often you should be MFA'd when you're trying to access secure data. Currently, with um, TaxLayer, it happens every 15 days if you're doing our website. And on our software, it makes you re reset your password every 180 days. There's a high likelihood the software will have to change to 90 days this season. So you might have to change your password in your software once this season, during peak season. So this is an example of the authentication. So if I'm trying to log in from a brand new computer where I've never logged in before, it's going to give me this screen, and I can choose whether I want it to email me or text me a verification code. It comes, if you do text, it's definitely the preferred method because there's no delays possible from your email servers or our email servers or anybody else's. Text comes through in about two seconds. So it comes right through to your phone, six-digit character, put it in there, click verify, and you'll log right in. If you're also a ProWeb user and not the desktop user, you'll no longer have two separate accounts. You'll actually sync your username and you'll use one username to get into your My Account and get into your ProWeb account. Everybody remember taxes to go Who used taxes to go last year? Okay, we need to get more of you using it, but that's a good size. Um, last year was our first year, kind of a beta year for our brand new app, taxes to go Quickly run through what it looked like. It allowed you to sign up, create an account, snap pictures, go through and enter your basic information, scan your driver's license, send your documents, take a picture to verify that it's actually you, and send it off to the tax preparer. They can call you and say, hey, I've given you all my documents. Let me know when you're done with the tax return. And you could send that tax return information back to them and get it remotely signed, right? We thought. How can we make this thing better? Last year, they had to give you a code, and you would go to a, the, hello? You'd have to go to the tools menu and say, pull this return from the app, put in the person's last name and the code that they got generated on their app on their phone, and you would be able to import that return. We did over 40,000 of these, okay? It was a very good success for the, the limited release that we had on it. But how can we make it better? So we looked over the off season and said, what can we do to make this better? What can we do to make it better for you and for your clients? Well, one of the things that we heard over and over again was, how can you make it so it's more like me, so that it's my app? And that's very hard to do in the way the apps work in the store, but we made it yours. So now what you're going to be able to do is customize it. You're going to be able to have your tax name, your graphic of your choice show up on the, the actual app when they load the app. Again, it's going to be done through your My Account. So when you log into My Account, you're going to have a taxes to go down here. 
And again, remember this is for your premium client, so if you're not a premium user, upgrade today. You'll have taxes to go. Come in here, you put in your name. You can choose a color scheme. Upgrade, up, upload your logo. And then when they download the actual taxes to go app, they'll have your graphics, okay? Gives you a little bit bigger presence out there. <clears throat> Inside the return, it's gonna be a lot better for you as well. You're no longer gonna have to go to the tools menu and say import a return uh, from the app. You're not gonna have a working client list. It's gonna work just like our rejected return list or the review list if you use uh, the review process as well. So up in the toolbar, for those of you who use these two tools, this is our review list and that's our rejected return list. The new one is gonna be the pulled from app list and it's gonna be a client list. So you go get a little indicator on that icon saying maybe three. So three new apps have been submitted to you. Click on that, it's gonna be a client list of those three clients. As Soon as you take those clients into the tax program, they're gonna move physically into your tax software and come off of this list. So it's a working list, you can easily get people imported into your software. Now what else has changed? Everybody remember last year the 8867 changed quite significantly, right? What was new with it? Covered EIC, but it also covered additional child tax credit now. AOTC, lots of fun, right? Well, one of the things that that required the IRS to change for this year is the 8862, because now it's gotta cover the same three possible credits, right? And possible disallowance of those credits. So this has actually pretty significantly changed. If you, it's not something you tend to look at every day, but if you go and compare last year's to this year's, once you get your software installed, it's pretty significantly changed to cover it. There's all new sections page, uh, on page two to deal with the different credits. You've also got indicators as to which credits you're actually filling it out for. And so that's how it uh, required us to rework the entire menu in here inside the software. So you'll notice now when you go in there this year, you're gonna have three different sections depending on what uh, credits were disallowed in the prior year. One of the other major things that we changed was in the ACA and the way it's being processed. And hopefully, because one of the things the Senate did add to their bill today was to take away the required uh, coverage penalty. No, it was added in the Senate's today. That was new today. So if that holds true, that could really throw everyone through a loop. But right now, what we have done, which we did not have last year, was the actual affordability worksheet. So if someone was trying to figure out if they fell under the uh, affordability worksheet, you'd have to do some manual calculations on your own. We actually integrated that this year. So you'll see these menus are slightly different than last year, but allow you to do everything all inside the software. Some changes on our pro website. We already showed you the rejected return list on the desktop. If you're a desktop user, you're already familiar with that. But on the pro website, we didn't have that tool. So now there is a rejected return list. It's a client list that works just like the desktop. So when you click that, you'll see all returns that are rejected or have a validation error for that tax year. And you select your tax year. And you can also actually click on this or hover on this and it'll tell you what your actual reject or validation issue is. And just like the desktop, it works like a working list. So once you address the issue and retransmit it, it comes off this list. Also in ProWeb, we changed the entire way that it works by using a drop down for your tax year. In the past, you actually had everything targeted for the current year, right? If you want to do prior year stuff, you actually did it through uh, the bottom of the main menu on the program. Now you'll toggle your year and your main menu is whatever year you've selected. So you're reporting, you're reporting on whatever year you've selected, for example. It also tells you who you're currently logged in. Again, for the desktop users, this was new last year because with the new security requirements, you didn't necessarily know who was logged in if you walked up to a computer and you walked away. Now it tells you at the top of the screen does the same thing in ProWeb now. Also redid a little bit of the general layout of our ProWeb. So in the ProWeb product, you used to have a breadcrumb trail that ran across the top here where you could say, I wanna go to income, I wanna go to deductions, I wanna go to credits. That's completely redesigned and now works like a workflow down the left-hand side. 
and your federal and state refunds used to be across the top. They've now dropped down to the right-hand side. So a little bit cleaner look. Also, again, on the pro web, client, or not client lists, any edit lists. So like W2s, for example, where you're going to possibly have one, two, three, four dependents, where you're going to go ahead and add more than one. All were redone to actually work more like a list and use some standard icons for editing and removing. How can we give you more so your taxpayers feel like they're getting more, but help you also increase your revenue? So I'm going to go over a couple of those things. And a couple of these, these products are for you. A couple of them are for your taxpayers. The first one is a partnership with Surgent. I'm sure you've probably heard of Surgent. They're one of the most respected CPE uh, companies out there. So we worked with them and we created a very unique package where it covers probably the five most popular things that all of you do. You either fall under the annual filing season program. So an annual filing season program for non-exempt tax preparers. You can do CE credits for $99 or if you want a printed version for $119. If you fall under the filing season program for an exempt tax preparer, it's a little less expensive. It's $79 and $99. For enrolled agents, there's four different packages. 16 uh, hours of credit for 129. You can do live seminars for $20 more. And you can do a 40 hour package for 20, uh, 229 or a live package for 249. There's also an unlimited web, uh, package for CPAs. There's also an enrolled agent exam review course and two CPA review courses. So if you're working on getting your certification, there's a, there's a course there for you as well. Very easy to access inside of your My Account. We have a partner page, which is currently being completely redesigned right now as we speak. You'll see all these links inside there. You'll want to use those links because they're going to get you through to the discounted pricing. Okay? Don't go Google Surgent and try and go directly on there. You're going to see their full price offers. Go through your My Account and click on the link. So those ones are for you. The next one is for you. Okay, what do we talk about at least two different, at least two different presentations today? Security, right? I heard cyber security come up at least once before I got up here. And that's probably the most important one to me. But what Coverhound is, how many of you have uh, tried to price out life insurance? And you've gone on a website, you put in a couple basic pieces of information, and that broker site goes and tests everybody and comes back and gives you all the different premiums. Everybody familiar with doing that? It's kind of how Coverhound works. So you come into Coverhound and you say, this is the kind of insurance I'm looking for. And we worked on packages that make sense for our clients, which uh, with things we thought you guys should have if you don't already have. Some are very basic. It's a general liability or a business owner's policy. Protect you, protect your company, protect your employees, et cetera. Professional liability, errors and emissions insurance, right? Everyone should have it, just in case, right? But cyber is the newest threat, right? So what happens if you don't do everything you're supposed to do, you forget one little thing, someone does get in and steals all the information off of your computers? Who's liable? You're liable, right? This insurance is very inexpensive. And with the, the rate at which these attacks are increasing, I highly suggest that you go into your My Account, go into the Partners page, click through to Coverhound, and again, it's through those links. You've got to go that way if you want to get the discounts, and just get the quote. It's not going to hurt you anything to get a quote. You're going to see how inexpensive it is, and you're going to get yourself protected. The next two technically are for both. They're for you, and they're for your taxpayers. And the reason I say that is, for example, Securely ID. Securely ID is a full service identity protection solution that's integrated into your TaxLayer Pro software. What does that mean? It means it's free for you to offer it to your clients. You can earn up to $10 per return for a, a single return, $20 if it's a married filing joint return, and this is all on a base price. Base price for a taxpayer is $39.99. It's the exact same coverage that you hear from the lock company, okay? But how much is the lock company? It's $240 a year. So 
So for 25% of the cost, you can give those same benefits to your clients. You can also add on to the base fee, and I'll show you how to do that in our configuration menus in a second here. But just to give you another example, if you put an add-on fee of $20, so you're charging $59, we're still 25% of the cost of the bigger name company with the same coverage, and you're gonna make an extra $30 per return, okay? On your average prep fee, and this is a big room, that's probably anywhere from 10 to 20% increase on your tax prep fee, right? Going straight to you. Go back to what I said earlier today. No one wants to go and get the same service and pay more for it, right? But everyone's struggling to try and grow in this market. So how are you growing? Well, you're increasing your bottom line 10 to 20% without charging a higher prep fee because you're providing them an additional product, right? It's pretty cool too. Like I said, it's got all the things you've heard about. If you've ever looked at these, if you've heard the advertisements, it covers everything, the buzzwords, the million dollar insurance, they're gonna cover you for up to that. There's some other cool stuff. Lost wallet, I always thought that meant, hey, if your wallet gets stolen, they're gonna cancel your credit cards for you, get you new stuff, and get you up and running, right? It does that, but it also does cool stuff. One of the best examples is a client of Securely ID that was going to the Super Bowl, okay? This is a once in a lifetime thing, right? If you're lucky, it's a once in a lifetime thing and a very expensive thing. The client lost their tickets. That's covered in, uh, in lost wallet, okay? It's a full service restoration product. You get a one-on-one -on -one person that works with you. So if your taxpayer gets this, they're lucky enough to go to the Super Bowl, they lose their tickets, they get to deal one-on-one -on -one with somebody who helps them get their tickets back or replacement tickets. That's pretty cool. AMP is the second one. Now AMP is a product that we have been integrated with for a couple of years, but we've worked with them to actually increase that product, make it more valuable, and make it easier for you to integrate it in the software. It's a low cost audit protection solution directly integrated into your software. Works very much like Securely ID. It's free for you to offer. You don't have to do anything to be able to offer this to your clients. You can earn $10 per return, and it protects your clients from the event of an IRS audit. Same price, $39.99. Again, it's protecting your clients from the IRS and an IRS audit. Each case is assigned to an experienced CPA or EA, so you know you're dealing with a quality, uh, quality product. They'll have to ha help you to recover unfunded returns and prep fees, and they're gonna cover that return for the full three years, the full liability of three years. Both of those products inside the software fall on the main 1040 screen off your left-hand side where you can toggle them on and off individually. They're gonna carry through to your receipt screen so you can see in this particular case there was an add-on fee of $10. Like I said, in configuration you actually can go in and that's where you actually will establish your additional add-on amounts. Securely ID is a little unique in the sense that if it's, a, if it's a single taxpayer or a head of household taxpayer, one policy will cover that taxpayer and the dependents on the return. If it's a joint taxpayer, the, there's a separate policy for the spouse. So you'll actually enroll in both, or you can choose. So if it's a married, felon, joint couple, you can choose taxpayer and children, you can choose spouse only, or you can choose everybody on the return. Hmm? Good question. The question was, are these two products covered in all states? Yes, they were valuable in every state. So I hope you can see these two new products have a ton of value for your clients. They can help you grow your business not only in the bottom line with the actual money that you're gonna be receiving for the product sale, but the taxpayer has a great experience, right? If they are actually in the unfortunate case that they have an audit, they get a letter, their identity theft is stolen. These are horrible things that are going on, right? But if they come out of it with a great positive outlook, who do they associate that with? They associate it with you, right? What does that do for you? Get you the most important thing in this business, if you ask me. 
word of mouth, referrals, right? Come for three. Yeah, in that situation, if you have a, if you're filing a tax return and a dependent's already been claimed on another tax return, that's gonna trigger a letter from the IRS, right? That letter is covered under the AMP product. So that actually takes work off your plate, allows you to continue doing other things, making even more money while they're getting taken care of. There's another question over here somewhere. Good question. She said, "Was the fee is the fee annual? For AMP, it's good for the tax return for three years, and for Security ID, it is an annual subscription. It automatically will expire one year from the date that they they do the tax return and get enrolled. So every year they come back to you, you can do it again. Nope. That's the other good thing. Not only is the lock company a ton more expensive, they charge you monthly because, as we all know." That's the way the world's going, right? That's why you can buy an app for free and get charged 99 cents every week, right? None of that. It's a one-time charge. Hey, is there marketing material for Another excellent question. There is marketing material for these companies. Um, we are lucky to have representatives from AMP here today. They'll be here tomorrow as well. They have a booth set up. Um, they'd be happy to show you what they have and how they're going to get it to you. When you sign up in your My Account, for those of you that have already done it or those of you who haven't, there's the opportunity to say, yes, I want to offer independently or together, AMP or Securely ID, and whether you want more information as far as the advertising. So you can get that as well. So if it's 29 for AMP, then your $10 just disappeared. <laughs> with, with the AMP, um, giving the clients that, and if they're audited, how are the people going to receive their information? Seem like they would still have to get it from us since we collect everything, because most clients don't um, retain good records. So you're not inconvenienced as far as handling, but you're still inconvenienced if you got to forward all the information uploaded to the agents to fight it on their behalf. Correct. So when, the, when a client gets a letter, they're hopefully going to do what you want them to do, which is come to you first, right? At that point, that's when you work with AMP to get that workload off of your plate. But yeah, you're going to still contact that taxpayer. And, and quite frankly, I think you want that. You want them coming to you, getting them turned over, getting the thing taken care of, because then they associates back to you, right? Right, and that's about the letter about the AMP. We just um, resolved it. They're going to have to contact us to get the information. They won't, the taxpayer doesn't always have everything retained. So I'm assuming they're going to reach out to us and say, send us a file. If, if you've got the information, they can work with you, or if they want to work directly with the client because the client has it, they can do that as well. Another great question. And you're kind of stealing, you do this every year, I think. You steal my thunder in my future slides. I'll, I'm going to go over that. Correct. It is a three-year protection period for that tax return. So ancillary products pair perfectly with a refund settlement product, right? How many people are offering bank products in your, in your offices? Okay, good. We all know the benefits of a bank product, right? Probably the biggest thing is no out-of-pocket no out, no out expense for your client, the convenience. It also takes you out of the collections business. But it's a proven fact that customers will gladly buy additional services or features if they're not paying out of pocket. Everybody's done this. We've all done it, right? When you're not actually physically taking the money out, it's very easy to say, yeah, upgrade me to the large pizza. You know, Upgrade me to the suite instead of the, the king, or give me the king instead of the doubles. It's very easy, and it's, very, it's human nature. So if you're already getting the, the, the person to have their settlement done through a direct deposit or a check or a card, they're very, very much more likely to say, yeah, uh, that sounds like a great feature. I'll take that. So when they're taking the, your fees out of their refund, they're four times more likely to go ahead and take those additional features. OK? 
okay? So just think about that, do the numbers in your head of whatever your percentage of bank products is in your office, how much more you would be bringing in with probably at least 40% of those people taking one or two of these products, okay? Again, increasing your bottom line, increasing your referrals. I think they're a great marriage. Um, back to how do the fees get distributed? And that was one of the questions over here. If it's a bank product return, the agreements are already set up with the banks to say, okay, this is an AMP fee, for example. It's gonna go in a certain bucket so they know who it is, and it gets paid to AMP, and then AMP reimburses you because they know who the ERO is, okay? Doesn't mean you have to only sell it to bank product clients because all the banks also have the ability to invoice your fees just like they can advance you fees as one of the options that they give to you before season, right? So if you're doing a tax return and the person does not choose to do a bank product, you can still sell that to them and those fees can be invoiced against the future return that is a bank product, okay? Okay, so the, the, the situation is that the person is new to you, for example, or new to doing a bank product or both, and they choose to do one of the products, and for whatever reason, the, the return doesn't fund or the return funds, but it's taken for another debt somewhere else. At that point, what is going to happen is, just like your prep fees, you're not getting your prep fees, the products aren't getting their fees, they're not gonna have coverage. That does not mean that they won't have the ability to make everybody whole, right? They could make you whole prep fees, they could make the AMP fee whole and still retain those, op those options. Well, I think her question has to do, are they gonna take the money back from out of her pocket? No, was that your question? Yeah. No, if, yeah. if the taxpayer's refund doesn't fund, they're not paying for the service. You're not, you're not fronting the money for the, the tax preparer, or the taxpayer. <laughs> That's a good question too. So the question was, essentially, who gets funded when? So in your typical example, this could be a, a tax return that's got $200 in prep fees on it, and let's say it's got AMP on it for $39.99, it's got our software fee on it, it's got the state deposit and the bank fee on it. Those are all preset in an order that get paid and that's based off of the bank. Um, typically it's the bank will get their money, the software will get their money, you'll get your money, and then the ancillary product will get their money. That's gonna depend on your bank for one. Um, the banks have their set pricing fees. So what you, there's, our fee hasn't changed. Our base fee is still 24 and then you can earn your rebates on that. The bank fees, I think, yeah, there might be one that stayed the same. Definitely stop by your bank booth. They're gonna be here all day, today and tomorrow. Because another thing that's changed They've worked real hard this off season to make your advanced products more attractive, right? Yeah. So the amounts have gone up uh, across the board for all of our banking partners to make them more attractive and make you more competitive on those. So if you don't already know the details of those as well, definitely stop by and talk to them about those. Yeah, Nate, due to, due to time, and I know you'll be around so they can grab you with questions. Also, AMP will be here. We mm -hmm. also can help at the um, upfront desk with any other questions, but Bank products, good question. We've got our whole bank partners here. Why don't we move forward with So that? I know what you're saying. You're saying that Glenn is next. And Glenn's from New Jersey, and he loves to hear himself talk. So I've got to go. So real quick, before I do go, as I announce our bank representatives, if you spin around, they'll raise their hands so you can see them if you haven't met them before, so you'll know who you're looking for. From River City, we've got Crystal and David are both here. Crystal. Republic, we've got Carter Dempsey, I saw Carter. 
with TPG. Eric and Phyllis are both here as well as Peter. Refund Advantage, Carrie Shields, Kenny and Margie are here. And with Refundo, we've got Roger, Robert, Malin, and Megan. So if you don't already know those faces, now you've got them. You can go see them, like I said, either today, they'll be here tonight during the reception, and also tomorrow. Thank you. All right, guys, let's give Nate a round of applause.